This video is brought to you by Empower, which brings you business power for your fitness industry. Use the code BROCAS upon registration to receive a special discount. Hey everyone, so I wanted to welcome you to the new series called Solving Aikido, where I will talk with some of the experts in their fields in martial arts and self-defense in, uh, in Aikido related and martial arts related topics and also all in the question of how do we take the Aikido that the, with the trouble that it's in and how do we practically solve it what methods could we use what other people already have uh, have experienced and have developed in order to solve this issue so a lot of great talks will be out there. In the very first talk, we'll have with Dan the Wolfman, a well-known, very experienced martial artist. He also had some professional UFC fights uh, and just a great guy in, in totality. He has four black belts in different realms, uh, a lot of self-defense experience in the combative area, and also in the traditional martial arts. He has a brown belt in Aikido, which he'll tell you more about in the interview. But Visky, he he's the guy who can really look at how Aikido works in pressure-tested scenarios. Uh, you might have seen some of his videos, they went quite viral, where he applies uh, Aikido takedowns in, uh, in inspiring sessions or even in the ring. And uh, we released one video with him uh, on our channel where he does takedowns for Aikido, effective takedowns. So really great guy to, to get to know to. Uh, the injury was really great and today I'll be offering you a certain section, one of the best uh, things he said in the whole interview we had for about an hour. So please look into it, many great thoughts in that short segment. And then next Friday you'll get to see the whole video, the whole full hour discussion we had and then you can benefit and get inspired from it. Then in the other interviews we'll uh, continue with some other great people. The next person I'll talk to will be Bruno Orozco, who has already who has a lot of experience in martial arts and combatives, and has already developed a self-defense combative variation of Aikido, which I'm really looking forward to talk to him about and to share what he has to share with you. Maybe I can find some great solutions which are already developed in in my own process. So just stay tuned, subscribe, and make sure. You get to see that talk uh, right after we finish up with Dan. And the very last thing I'll, I'll say just before I let you go to the video, I know you guys are dying for some more practical stuff, especially sh uh, me showing my progress, me showing my training. Trust me, I know that. I will show you a lot of stuff. Uh, in a few weeks, I'll go to England to do, to do intensive training just to develop a modern version of Aikido. Uh, also, the Aikido flow guys will be coming to my country. We'll meet up, we'll train together. And I'll definitely film all, the, all of those things. And I'm planning to do a lot of uh, drills uh, just like uh, sparring live pressure testing and I'll film that to show you guys how I progressed and in April at the end of April it's going to be one year that the Aikido versus MMA video has been released so uh, if all goes well I'll do the second rematch to see how much I progressed during the year so it's gonna be awesome so stay tuned all in all I won't waste any more of your time and I'll leave you with the interview Right now, situation of, of conflict. I felt always not sure about what will I do. There was such a big gap between my Aikido and those street situations where, as you said, you would have a backup plan. You know you could handle them uh, if that came to be, and then you can use Aikido. For me, it was like, crap, how do I make sure I use this tiny bit of limited practice that I have? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that, that issue is, I definitely experienced it. So, so I'm curious to ask you. If, if you, when you look at Aikido, uh, what, what do you, do you perceive that there's some flaws in it or do you think it's fine the way it's trained or if, if there are flaws, how would you consider that they should be addressed uh, or, or fixed? Before we get into the flaws, uh, I want to make the comment that um, a lot of things do have to do with uh, psychology. Right. And right away, if an aggressive guy gets in your face and even gives you a hard shove, I think what you found was, oh my God, and you kind of withdraw back. And that's because you're used to the peace and harmony, right. the flowing flower pot lid that you try <laughs> to be in a keto to fit the pot. Right. And that is high level stuff. Mm. Uh, when you can actually do it when someone is coming with aggressive pressure. But if you're not used to that aggressive pressure, if right. someone's giving you stuff, then um, you'll, you'll freeze up, you'll get defensive, you'll get scared, you'll get tight and suddenly there's no flow there's no aki right. anymore because you're tight so right. <laughs> you can't actually apply it then just from a psychological and physiological standpoint because someone gave you a shove if you're not used to that you freeze up sure. and obviously if you only train at this pressure level so the, the the thing is you don't necessarily have to go to the mma level if you want to be the best at fighting 
Right. You do, but if you just want to be good enough to handle an everyday untrained attacker, you don't necessarily have to go there, but you definitely have to go above here. Right. So there is varying levels of degrees in between that. Right. And um, I think that's what you're trying to find is how do I keep what is Aikido right. and just modify or change or pressure test a little bit. Not that we have to totally always have black eyes and bloody noses, sure. but let's not be scared of occasionally maybe getting tagged. Let's right. not do nothing against an actual punch. And let's also please don't fall into even the people doing more live stuff. One of which I mentioned earlier, a lot of the videos, the guys doing the step lunge punch. <laughs> I don't see a lot of step lunge punches. And when you see Aikido, see La Kali, Krav Maga demonstrations, all this kind of stuff, mm. often you see that and that's not a realistic attack. So, you know right. what, like, like we're both in South Paul leagues mm. and then a guy steps and lunges or he just feeds this. And that's, that's all, malarkey right. um so yes i see a lot of things with as a total martial art aikido is not that i don't know if it will ever be that but we can bring it to a certain level that people might at least have a better chance of protecting themselves versus be disillusioned and if a street attack actually happens and i'm just talking one-on-one -on -one, you know aggressive person that's used to right. violence versus someone that's doing peace and flowy harmony they should at least be able to protect themselves. Hopefully win, like win, but at least defend themselves and not get too injured. Right. Yeah. That seems like such a minimal, minimal goal, but even that Aikido does not give you right now. And that needs to be brought up to at least that level. And right. if we can bring it up a little bit higher would be my goal, then even better. Right. So would you say that pressure testing is one of those missing key components or would you point something at something else in terms of bringing that uh, gap, uh, kind of fixing that gap? Yeah, there's in-betweens. Um, I mean, ideally, your high-level people would be really sparring. And, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm curious to see what it looks like in that one-year mm -hmm. uh, Uchideshi police program. I think, is, it, is it Tomiki Aikido still does? In, in Tomiki is the competition one. Uh, oftentimes, Yoshinkan is the police Yoshi yeah, so there, there's still that the Hambo Dojo. Um, it was kind of far from me in Tokyo, so mm -hmm. I never went. Right. But I'm still curious to see kind of what they look like and the stories that I've read mm. about there. Like they, they're still probably going pretty hard, and there is talks of bloody noses and black eyes when you mm. when you do their one year, like during the daytime, train all day, right. um, slash uchideshi, like live-in type program. Mm. Um, you know, eventually your top students should be able to train a little bit like that. But do I have do I think that everyone in the keto world is ready for that? No, I don't. And, and older people don't necessarily have to do that. But you can add, add, without full pressure testing, you can add pressure and you can add a little bit of aliveness to get there. Right. Uh, so I've got a few ideas on, on yeah. how to do that. Um, two of them I'll mention quick, and I'd like to, to go back into this after if we can. Sure. I think, yeah. I think is in your, whatever your organization or style or whatever you want to call it, whatever you're trying to do, I think you should maybe think about taking on technical directors. And let's come back to that later. Okay. I think, I think senseis and yourself should get a certain level of background in um, – to, to be a teacher in the style, I think someone should get a blue belt, at least in BJJ or a black belt right. in judo, and also have some striking experience. I think Shotokan, I like Kyoko Shin, uh, but I think Shotokan probably blends uh, best um, with uh, Aikido. I think you should have some background. Now, as far as what I think classes should be like, yeah. uh, even in Japan, the classes were one hour. And when you do stretching and warm up and you mm. do all the bowing and kneeling down, you're not getting a lot of repetitions even on, you know, the five or six techniques you do. Mm. Um, how long are your classes when you teach? Uh, about an hour and a half, sometimes hour 45. It includes warm-ups, rolls, and depends on the, the, okay. the theme of the class. But it's longer than one hour. I think that's I think that's what's needed um, is at least hour and a half, maybe hour forty five minute classes, mm -hmm. 
because I think you need to add in some of that pressure stuff. And here is right. some of the things that I think every class should have in whatever a new organization or even people that aren't in an efficient organization, but they watch your videos and they're like, I want to functionalize things a little bit. Sure. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to be winning a UFC championship any day, but I want to functionalize a little bit that I don't feel so threatened and go, Oh my God, what do I do when an aggressive guy gives you a shove and swears right. at you? Um, but I think here's some three recommendations on how to do that. I right. think every class, one of the techniques you show and drill needs to be a strike counter, a realistic strike counter, be that a punch, a kick, I even do a very Aikido-like rising sun defense against an elbow. It has to be something fairly realistic, and I say fairly because it's still hard to pull off, but a fairly realistic counter uh, to a real strike, a jab across a hook, an overhand, a front kick, maybe a low round kick to the leg, um, think maybe a, a grab and punch, like a grab a shirt and they go to punch your face. That's also um, good. Um, I think you need to practice at least one of those each class. Right. And now let's drill that for five, six, seven minutes. And then maybe the last three, four, five minutes, like the video I did the other day, which you saw right. building up pressure and, and obviously lower rank, uh, newer students aren't going to do it with as much aliveness as the higher rank. That's how it should go. Mm -hmm. But jab, cross, hook, overhand. Just those four basic punches because that's the most likely similar type thing you're going to see. Right. Then you should build up going through the one you drilled, but also doing other ones, parrying deflections, um, you know, covering, hooking, trying to do an arimi nagi, all this kind of stuff. That's still hard, but at least, at the very least, if you do that for a few minutes after uh, you, you're getting used to um, – visual line familiarization your brain mapping which angles come in you're getting used to actually seeing a punch throw in which no one in keto does right now other than maybe like a uh, to the stomach right 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 <laughs> <laughs>